country wild He's a man with a backcountry style Searching for treasure yet untold Up and down the creeks for his gold And it's minor bust Minor bust Minor bust Because it's in his blood And that's what a miner does Just like the gold rushers of old Who live and died for their gold With picks, packs, shovels, rifles in hand Up and down the creeks in the backcountry land It's minor bust Minor bust Minor bust because it's in his blood and that's what a minor does. Nice cool fall evening. The leaves are just about dropped. It's getting a lot colder at night. And, uh, we're at the end of the season here now. Learned quite a bit about the ground. Definitely have a lot better idea for uh, a small scale mine in here as far as a plan goes and what to expect. The golds are looking good. The ground's looking good. Now we just need to get in here next season, a little larger, with a better plan. Last time, we managed to get everything down into the claim. We opened up and completed our first samples. Washing the gravels and the rocks carefully, and finding a trace of good golds. But it's time for us to move on to our next sample site. Pushing a trail with this little excavator sure is a lot of fun, but there's always hidden dangers and a guy needs to keep an eye on what he's doing, as well as pick the best path to do the least amount of damage. After all, we're just in here sampling. Here she goes. Breaking the trail with this little machine quickly became a favorite thing. I was having so much fun, I almost forgot about this intake hose off in the woods. Sure didn't take long to bust the trail into our next sample site. Now we can get busy opening things up. Slowly cutting into this hill and feeling the rock tops along the way, carefully removing the overburden. This is an old sample site I did years ago and it always proved some pretty nice golds. I really can't wait to see what lies underneath this hill. This old river channel ran for quite a while in its history and it's left a nice trail of heavies as well as gold. You just have to dig sample holes off into the woods and trace some old river channels down through your claim. Getting an idea of the average depths and the material it holds as well as the golds. I sure have spent a lot of time down in here prospecting. From panning along the creek to dropping sample holes through the woods and tracing up the golds. I sure I've enjoyed all these years panning along this creek and I'm looking forward to the future of this little mine. Life sure can't get any easier. This little machine is making fast work of this hill. We must be a good 50 feet in. Yeah. 
in a little rock, you know. As we cut in, I'm still feeling the tops of rocks, which is a very good sign. This whole channel is a lot wider than I thought. We sure did make good progress today, but with that sun just about touching the hill, it's time to shut down and enjoy the rest of the night. We are done for the day. We get started on an early day. Taking out the last bit of this overburden, it's going to be pretty exciting to see this old river channel underneath. Well, finally, we're about where we need to be. When we use the last bit of this overburden. We're going to make a trail along the side of this hill for a road up into the top. Such small sample sites makes it a little tough to move around. We'll get this plant in place and we'll level it up and we'll get digging down into them pay gravels. Well, we got the wash plant set in. We moved about as much of this hill as we're going to, as much as the permanent ones. Got Josh moving back the last bit of overburden there. Get it out of the way so we can cut down into the pay gravels. Looks a little rounded off where you're supposed to wrench on it, but we'll see what happens with the breaker bar. Worst case scenario, just take a file and resharpen it or regroove it, then it should come off. Oh, I'm gonna need a deeper socket here, it's 10 mil though. So. There's deep 10. There we go, deep 10. Uh, fits like a glove. I'm gonna set the, grab my breaker bar here and pry on her for a little while. So, my breaker bar there is uh, one drive bigger than them sockets. They don't have a little conversion conversion drive there. 
So, you have to see what's in the next kit and hope they have a 10 mil deep. There she comes. There we go, now it's starting to loosen up. Well, we finally got down to the pay layer. Took our first samples. Oh, we just did a little test pan off the bottom there. Just four nice flake, a bunch of smaller stuff in there. About ten pieces all together. All the right look, looking rock and everything else I'm looking for. So there should be some gold in that pay pile. This is one of the reasons that this area is a little bit tricky. It sits on a false bedrock of gravel and rock. And if you look at this rusty layer, you'd think the gold keeps on going down. It actually sits right on top of here. This is where the rust stain comes from. It's just from the moisture and the water tables going up and down. It pulls all the rusty layers from the black sand streaks in here downwards with the water. Yeah, a guy could easily keep on digging by the looks of this, but all the years of sampling, I've always looked for this false bedrock of gravel, and the old channel sits on top of it. Yeah, we know there's gold down in here now. It's time for me to get out of here. Should be our last day here digging up the pay gravels. Should have a pretty good slice of the old river stockpiled. Yeah, I don't know if you uh, remember this old rock from my uh, older videos. This is uh, one of the first sites that I opened up years ago in this area and uh, I've traced this old river channel all the way up river all the way down in behind us here and uh, it's all had pretty decent gold some nice chunky stuff in there I still remember the first time I run a high banker what a treat after years of using a gold pan and then moving up to a nice little high banker. Sure was nice to wash gravels all day. I sure have spent a lot of years prospecting and digging random holes. And it's always nice when you uncover an old channel and you find a bit of gold. Look at it. Nice nugget right in there. Oh, another big one in there. Looking pretty good. Looks like moving that boulder was well worth my effort so far. There are a couple nice pieces up front already. Over the years tracing out this old channel, I sure have found some pretty nice golds. There's one fellow prospector, Tommy, that I know would be interested in seeing what's under this hill. Today I'm out uh, here again opening up this old section of the river. 
going to be out here for a couple days. Probably put in a bit of a night shift. Yeah, I decided that I wanted to really open this up, make a nice slice here. Basically examine the layers and how this uh, modern river channel structured through this valley. And then uh, that'll have a really good idea of what layers to attack and what to expect further on to uh, prospecting. Yeah, the old timers in the gold rush when they were in here. Like I say, they mined out all along this creek. You can see their rock piles all across. And in the old work report, they were talking about setting up a wing dam just up in the canyon up here. They were going to dam it off, bring the water level up. You can see where they had ditches carved into the top of the hill where they were going to run the water. And uh, from what I can see, their plan was they're going to ditch the water along the top of all this slide overburden material. Then they just make little cuts. And they let the water go and it would wash all this overburden down and across into the creek <laughs> and uh, strip this overburden away for them and they could get the pay gravels underneath which uh, in this area they were just setting up little rail cars they just have guys shoveling the pay gravel in they'd wheel her down to the creek and they'd have a big sluice set up in there and that's how they'd wash their gravels there's a uh, no water source up on the hill and behind us so there is no options for uh, hydraulic mining which is a good thing for us because I guarantee this area would have been washed out completely if they would have had a water source on that hill yeah their work got cut short it was a little bit too hard for them in their uh, time and era with the equipment they had it was a little bit remote for them, so uh, they pushed on to an area where they could obviously mine a little easier. But with today's modern equipment and pumps, this is a totally feasible area to mine, and uh, it should be a profitable one. Do a little bush fix. Josh was cleaning out the tracks. Notice our split pin was backing out. It's missing the cotter pin on the other side. Yeah, a lot easier to fix it now than if the track split in the wrong spot. Yeah, trying to get the track to line up here. That pin. Bucket on this side of the track here. Hopefully, we can get that pin back in without wrecking the track back. Well, of course, as soon as we started digging, the pin backs back out. We need to fix this before we end up in a real tight spot. Our split pin keeps backing out, so we don't have a cotter pin down here. So uh, we don't know what size the hole is, but we got a nail pulled out of a tree there. We'll wedge it in there, hopefully it fits. But, uh, definitely ain't going to town for a, a silly cotter pin. Cleaning up the last little bit here. Off that false bedrock there. 
got a pretty big pile of hay gravel here to wash through now. Take a little while to wash that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, what will be in this test run. It's kind of sad that we leave all this old channel, all kinds of old channel there, all in behind us. Yeah, we'll come back for that eventually when we do a full-time mining plan down here. This is just a part of uh, starting and opening a successful mine. Yeah, here's the false bedrock layer we're after. That's where all your pickers will be on here. Basically the last five feet of the river to this bottom. Yeah, that's good. On the bottom there should be a couple nice pieces in here. Well of course after being in the bottom of the sample hole and seeing that hard pan, I couldn't help but pull a sample pan off the bottom. Well, I just finished taking a sample pan off the bottom there. Uh, it looks like we're on the gold channel. That's a uh, Pretty nice considering that's just a pan. Got two nice pickers in there, a bunch of flake, some finer gold. Yeah, that's definitely looking uh, promising. That rust layer seems to drop down this way. So I think this is the center of the old river, the deepest point. Up there would have been the side of the channel, out here. Would have been the other outside of the channel and uh, back in here this is where I was sampling I drop holes into the side of the hill and uh, I was finding decent gold but what it was actually hitting was the side of the old pay and uh, it was pretty good gold so I'm hoping as you drop down into the heart of this channel things get a lot better and if you look at this uh, slide material you can see the old channel runs straight underneath it it goes down into uh, there's a big bowl on the other side of that slide and uh, we'll be proving up that side of the slide as well that this old river channel created that bowl back in there and uh, there should be a gold deposit back in there as well but when I started out, started panning on the creek, finding the gold, got to know the history of what happened in this area. And, uh, the old tailing piles all along this creek here, where the old timers washed all this gravel. So then I went to the, the next zone, which was in tight to this slope here, to the slide. And uh, there's a old sample hole right down there. That I proved the old river. We did ones down here and uh, one back in here and another one up there which uh, proved up some nice gold and warranted uh, further investigation into uh, cutting down into here and finding there is actually quite a large deposit of old river carrying gold. Good morning. Managed to wash a bit of gravel there last night. But uh, we had to shut down and change our plans. We had the uh, wash plant set up here. 
carved little channels here, hoping all the uh, waste rock would drop back in the hole, and water would wash back in. Fortunately, I don't have a metal chute to place into the side of the hill, and uh, the water was starting to erode the bank away way too much. So rather than be sorry with the wash plant down in uh, the holding pond down here, we decided to shut down, move the plant down here where it's a little bit safer. <laughs> yeah, always better to be safe than sorry. Yeah, we're going to wash some gravel today and uh, get a clean up out of this sluice here. See what kind of gold was sitting down in this hole. Really liking the structure to this channel. Say it shoots right through this hill. You can uh, see the heart of the old channel. There's a big rusty spot in there. And it looks like it's pretty central to uh, basically the deepest part of the U. So it should hold some pretty nice golds. Unfortunately, the wash plant's working well, really good, a little too good. The uh, sluice I built isn't keeping up with uh, the wash plant, so we're having to slow down all the time. built that wash plant in three weeks and it's designed to have something else next to it for next season so we're just using it this season and uh, just trying to get as much as we can out of it right now but like I say it's running a little too efficient for that sluice which I built for another deal for a fellow there and uh, unfortunately he backed out on me there's one thing I've learned in business, it's uh, getting easier and easier just for me to say no to people. Yeah, I built this plant basically to be a uh, deboner off to the side. I'm going to be building, a, I haven't decided if I'm going to build a trommel unit next to this or not. The idea was just use this to uh, wash all the big rock, debone the material, and send uh, basically one to two inch rock down into a next stage for uh, washing. And uh, I'm really happy with it. It's working really good. It'll uh, meet its purposes for next season. Yeah, trying to uh, wash with just this is a bit much though. Put in a smaller bar to try to keep the larger rock out. Say I made this for uh, washing the big rock and then sending all the smaller material to a second stage. So basically you'd have this plant set up on a platform. Feed your material in here. Get rid of all the big rock and then have a chute going out for all like two inch and minus plus your golds and then it'll go into another system off to the side if I'm going to build a small trommel or a similar system to this just use gravity and uh, elbow grease yeah we'll get set up here and uh, wash some of this gravel today and get a little clean up
washing as much gravel as we could through the plant before that water backed up. Rather than watch water drain, I tell Josh we're going to push on through the woods and start dropping some holes and making some trails. Dropping sample holes with this little excavator sure is easy. We'll go back down and wash some gravels before the end of the night. Now we're just doing little quick samples here. Sure a lot easier than excavator. This would, have, this would have taken a week or better to dig out. Like maybe 20 minutes. <laughs> this section of old river, about six feet deep. It's left high and dry, it doesn't have any overburden. Sitting on a real hard compact clay layer. Kind of sandy clay. Yeah, we'll just grab a bucket sample here off the contact zone here, this false bedrock clay layer. And, uh, if you can find any traces of gold in it. I also left the stockpile off to the side of the gravel in here. We'll just run through a high banker, or maybe about a yard of a test. Yeah, while I'm down here, we'll grab a quick sample of this. Do a couple pans and see if we can find a trace of gold. Well, we did a couple pans from the bottom of that hole there. There's a few nice flakes from the bottom of the contact zone with that false bedrock clay. So, uh, we're definitely on the old gold channel. We're just going to fill in that hole for now. We're going to push on through the bush there. We'll open up a couple more uh, speculation holes. Second channel, basically where the two intersect. 
It's kind of like two samples for one. Pretty bony, a lot of nice rock in it. It's a false bedrock layer right there. Nice section of channel underneath this material here, going right up into that hill. So there's definitely a whole channel back in here. This channel on this side goes back through here. Just a big flat and. Uh, Basically the river was left just high and dry here. Down river where we're doing the samples, that's where the big slide material came down. Diverted this river over and uh, eventually just left all this material high and dry. There's like almost zero overburden, maybe a half a foot. Basically walking on rock tops. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. It's almost looking like a good place to start mining next year with such little amount of overburden. Hay channel all right underneath us here. As long as we can trace up gold, uh, this will be an easy place to start. That's yeah, all this compact sand material up in here. So it makes it easy on a the machine to dig out this little channel. Easy to find the pay layer and just keep skimming everything off. But yeah, this is looking promising. We'll have to uh, grab a few buckets out of here off this bottom here. We trace out gold and we know we're golden. Hey Brutus? Bruce doesn't care. Can't figure out what I'm doing. Yeah, this is looking good to me. It was really rocky, bony material. Looks like all the same old river I've been chasing. Yeah. We got one more site back in here, sample five. And uh, I'm not gonna bring the wash plant up in here. I just wanna trace the old channel, do some grab sampling trace up the gold and then uh, I'm only permitted or uh, I'm only permitted five samples up in this top end after we're done here we we'll clean everything up and we'll go down below all these samples and uh, to my new claim that I just acquired over the winter that's in this back block here we're gonna push a trail through there I'm going to drop five more sample holes across there and uh, see if the gold channels run back up into this corner in this bowl. Yeah, so far I'm uh, pretty happy with this year's sampling. It's turning out good. It's definitely looking like a mine. We sure managed to push quite a ways into these woods and open up some pretty nice sights. But before the end of the night, we're going to go wash a little more gravel. He's a man of the backcountry wild. He's a man with the backcountry style. Searching for treasure yet untold. Up and down the creeks for his gold. And it's minor bust. Minor bust. Minor bust because it's in his blood and that's what a miner does. Just like the gold rushers of old who live and died for their gold. With picks, back shovels, rifles in hand, up and down the creeks in the backcountry land. It's minor bust, minor bust, minor bust because it's in his blood and that's what a miner does.
hit the mother.